I feel very comfortable getting the vaccine for several reasons. First of all, both the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine have been through large clinical trials. The Pfizer vaccine included 30,000 participants, the Moderna vaccine, 40,000 participants. So we know well that the vaccines work and about their safety profile. Also, the FDA has not altered their approval process at all. They've accelerated the approval process, but the steps in the approval process are exactly the same. The review panels, the way that the data are considered, all of that gives me great confidence that these vaccines are really excellent, 95% effective, and that they're safe. So I'm gonna be one of the first ones who's rolling up my sleeves to get this vaccine to make sure that I'm protected and as importantly that the community is protected and that we can stop the spread of COVID-19 and open up things in society again. We expect to receive the vaccine in the next few days and we expect to start administering it to the high priority healthcare workers and nursing home patients sometime next week. So the FDA advisory panel is going to meet this Thursday, December 10th. We expect to get the vaccine in sometime probably over the weekend and the authorization will likely come through towards the beginning of next week, maybe, maybe Monday, December 14th. And then we anticipate being able to start delivering it to the priority group 1A, which includes healthcare workers at risk and the nursing home patients. The public will get the vaccination subsequently as we get additional supplies and as time goes on. So through the early months of 2021, and through the mid months of 2021, we'll go to groups 1B, priority groups two and three until everyone across the country is vaccinated and we truly can open up again as we beat back and stop the spread of COVID-19 through the use of the vaccine and also continued use of our mainstays, masking, social distancing, hand washing, which will remain important even after the vaccine is given and administered. It's going to be really important that people continue to wear masks, social distance, and hand wash, avoid large gatherings, and do everything we're doing now even as the vaccine is being distributed and administered. The reason for that is several fold. First of all, at least 60% and probably 70 or 80% of the population is going to need to be vaccinated before we can ultimately stop the spread and beat back this disease so we can open up our restaurants and our gyms and everything else. The other thing is that the trials that we've run for this vaccine have had as an endpoint decrease of illness and decrease of severe disease. They did not measure transmission throughout the population. So we haven't formally proven that, although it's highly likely that this vaccine will work to stop transmission across the population. Carillion is going to initially get the Pfizer vaccine, and that vaccine is given initially and then three weeks later, 21 days later. So it's a series of two shots to get protection. We may also get the Moderna vaccine and in later shipments. That is also a two-dose series that's given 28 days or four weeks apart. So Pfizer to start, and then maybe Moderna and subsequent uh, shipments. We're working very closely with the Virginia Department of Health. The vaccine is distributed uh, and allocated by the federal government. It comes to the state governments, and then it's rolled out within the state to various points for further distribution. 
Carillion has the freezer space and other mechanisms in place so that we will be getting large shipments and probably and likely then distributing to other places in addition to what we need for our own initially uh, essential health care workers and uh, nursing home patients. Carillion is all set with freezer space, not only that's enough for our facilities, but also for other facilities in the region as needed. The Pfizer vaccine has to go at minus 80, which is a very low temperature. The cold chain, as we call it, to preserve the effectiveness of the vaccine is very important. The Moderna vaccine is frozen at minus 20 and can be held even at refrigerator temperatures for a number of days and still be effective. So each vaccine is different. These are the first two vaccines that are coming out. There will be others that will come out. And so people will hear about, for instance, AstraZeneca, Janssen, and others that will be coming out down the road. We'll probably need all the multi multiple vaccines to make sure everyone across the United States is vaccinated. The administration schedules for each vaccine are a little different. But uh, all in all, they have very, very good efficacy, as far as we know, for protection. For instance, both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine seem to be about 95% effective in preventing disease and infection, which is extraordinarily good and, and wonderful news for us as a population to make sure we can shut this down if in fact people take the vaccine. And so it's really important that people take this vaccine to protect themselves and others so we can fight back COVID-19. As I said, I'm gonna be first in line to get this vaccine uh, because I wanna be protected and I want to help stop the spread of infection so we can get back to normal. The Pfizer vaccine needs to be stored in an ultra-cold freezer because that's the way they've initially tested the vaccine. Pfizer is doing studies right now to see if the vaccine will remain stable at not such cold temperatures, and it's very likely that they're going to discover that higher temperatures, still cold temperatures, but higher temperatures will be perfectly fine. For now, to make sure that the absolute uh, efficacy of the vaccine remains, we will use the ultra-cold storage until we hear otherwise. The Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine both use a technology called mRNA or messenger RNA. This is a very exciting technology. The genetic code for just a piece of the virus, the outside protein of the virus, is actually given to patients. The protein is made within the body, and then the body's immune system responds to that protein and makes antibodies. Antibodies are what protect us against all types of infection. So there are many factories of this external protein of the virus. It's not the whole virus, so you can't get infected with the virus. It's completely safe. The body makes these antibodies, and then you're protected. This is really exciting because what's allowed us to make these vaccines so quickly is that we can make these little snippets of N mRNA very quickly, and then we've got it. And then we test it in large-scale scale trials, as we have here, so that we know it works and that we know it's safe. We don't know yet how long immunity will last from the vaccine. We'll have to follow people over time to figure that out. Based on our knowledge of other vaccines, it's likely that the immunity will be long lasting, but we always wanna know for sure by following people and measuring things. That's the way science works and medicine works. So we think it's gonna be long lasting immunity and we'll know for sure as time goes on. The vaccines will not make you sick in the sense that there's zero chance that you would get COVID-19 from the vaccine. It's 
literally impossible. The vaccines do have side effects, however, and so when these are administered, much as some other vaccines, some small percentage of people will get side effects. With the first dose, those side effects are generally very mild or non-existent. They might include, for instance, headache, fever, muscle aches, those sorts of things. And in the trials that have included tens of thousands of participants, with the first dose of vaccine, those side effects occur in about eight or 10% of people. With the second dose of vaccine, those same side effects can occur. They're generally mild to moderate, and they occur in a greater percentage of people. So with the second dose, anywhere between 20 and 40% of people will experience some sort of side effect that usually has an onset within about eight or 10 hours after that vaccination, and it's generally gone after a day. It responds to simple things like antipyretics, acetaminophen, aspirin, and then you're back to where you were. Those side effects are actually a sign that your body is making antibodies. It's a sign that the vaccine is working and that your immune system is gearing up to fight off any other exposures you might have to COVID-19. So it's actually understandable and, and, and not a bad thing to have these side effects. You can tell by the percentages that I just listed that most people will not have side effects. It's always good to report side effects and there's a wonderful CDC site called VSAFE. And on that website, you can find a form to report side effects. Um, it's really up to the individual person if they wanna do that. With these large numbers of patients we followed, we know the most common side effects. So many will just choose to report only if there's something unusual. The first thing to do obviously is to call your physician if anything like that should happen. And often the physician can decide whether it's important to report things or, or not based on what the patient tells the physician. The Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines both require two shots to be effective. There's an initial first shot, and with the Pfizer vaccine, a second shot 21 days later or three weeks later. With the Moderna vaccine, you have the initial shot, and then four weeks later or 28 days later, you get the second shot. The risk of missing the second shot is you won't be immune to the infection. So it's really important to get both shots to make sure that you develop immunity to the infection. The initial wave of vaccinations will be given to healthcare workers, at risk healthcare workers who are on the front lines caring for patients other healthcare workers who are in the COVID units and again on the front lines caring for patients, and also to nursing home patients who are at very high risk for infection and death. The scheme for subsequent rounds of rollout of vaccine are well spelled out, and it really is a tour de force of distribution and administration that will determine the timing with which people get this vaccine. Um, so that, that's, that's the initial plan. We call the first wave of vaccinations Group 1A. So all the trials include many elderly people because the trials focused on those most at risk for severe disease and death and age is one of those criteria. Other things like diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, those were all included in the trial. So we know that those populations are good to go in terms of receiving the vaccination. The initial trials did not include pregnant women, did not include children, and did not include immunocompromised patients, those people receiving chemotherapy or other treatments for underlying diseases of certain types. Those populations will have to be studied subsequently 
or um, determinations made as to relative risk. So when the FDA comes out next week, the week of December 14th, with their guidance, there will be statements about these populations and how one balances the relative benefit with risk as to whether people should get the vaccination or not. The seroprevalence study is meant to measure antibodies and protection against COVID-19 for people in the southwestern part of Virginia. So you're free to participate regardless of whether you receive the vaccine or not. That's fine. We just want to know how many people are protected in our region from infection. I think the key points uh, and the questions I've received and the points I'd like, I'd like to make is these are great vaccines. They're amazingly effective. There are some side effects, but these are easily managed. The benefit of protecting yourself against COVID-19 and stopping the spread of COVID-19 far outweigh any minor sorts of side effects. And for this to work and for us to open things up again in our area and throughout the country, everyone really needs eventually to take this vaccine so we can stop the spread of COVID-19.